Hello, I'm Paolo Shakarian, CEO and co-founder of Syracon. So thank you for joining me today for another video. We're going to talk a little bit about deep learning and other machine learning techniques. Now, if you watched my previous video on the difference between AI and machine learning, you'll know that artificial intelligence is a superset of machine learning. And there's other artificial intelligence techniques that do other things. And then within machine learning, deep learning is one such technique. Now, deep learning, of course, has gotten a lot of interest in the past several years. And why is that? And is it better than other forms of machine learning? So first, let's look a little bit at why deep learning became so popular. So deep learning was first used for image uh, recognition and analysis. Now, there was a whole branch of computer science that was dedicated to this topic. And the deep learning techniques, when they were introduced, they outperformed a good many of them. Now, why is that? Well, deep learning is actually not entirely a new technique by itself. Deep learning is really has its roots in what are called neural networks that have been around really since the 80s. The issue is that neural networks had a history of overfitting the data, meaning that they would model the data too closely. And so the results would not generalize. And this would often lead to wrong predictions. Now, what changed in the 2010s that allowed neural networks to sort of have a second coming? Well, the answer really deals with big data. So big data systems that started with Hadoop, and later we saw things like Bigtable and MongoDB, revolutionized the whole notion of the database and has allowed companies to build software products and SaaS-based services that could handle massive amounts of data that simply weren't possible in the past. So the neural network techniques being applied on in addition to the big data techniques could in many ways overcome this issue of overfitting because now you have a wider variety of data to train your model on. The other thing about these techniques is that they were particularly good with data that I would say is a little more homogenous where the sample data used to train the model is very similar in terms of format and quality. And that's why image recognition turned out to be a great use case for deep learning. Images are all uh, formed relatively the same way through coloring of different pixels. And new technology such as uh, Google and uh, image sharing services and this kind of thing have provided massive amounts of data that could be used to train these algorithms. Um, and that data was supplied through these big data backends. The results were astonishing. And it really changed the way we did a lot of things. So machine learning researchers have since then looked at other applications for deep learning and things like time series data analysis, analyzing textual data of the nature where the text is produced in a very well formatted and consistent manner. And of course, in all these cases, having large amounts of data to support the training. So where has deep learning not worked? Well, when the data sources become more heterogeneous, where they start looking different, so maybe 
I'm not collecting a bunch of data from a single source. Maybe there's multiple different websites. So going from say, let's look at just 140 character tweets to look at sources from uh, you know, Twitter, and then you have some blogs and you have some stuff in a different language or produced by a different culture or a much different format. Those would probably be uh, less amenable to deep learning techniques. Also areas where the data domain is uh, particularly amenable to indicators that come from domain experts. So you look at things like uh, predicting stock market activity where there's certain things that traders look for that have been proven to work well. Uh, those, you might be better off in that case, uh, putting that in an algorithm directly as opposed to allowing deep learning to learn that from the data itself. But one thing's for certain is deep learning is here to stay. Um, the amount of different types of applications where you have large amounts of homogenous data are very many. And even in cases where deep learning is maybe not the best thing to use as your ultimate classifier, it can also it can be used as a supporting routine for a in a larger prediction algorithm. So maybe you're considering images or certain kinds of very homogenous time series data as one of your sources. That could be pre-processed using deep learning and then used in a larger algorithm using other more traditional machine learning techniques to make the final prediction. Now, all this is not to say that deep learning is necessarily uh, better or worse than other machine learning techniques, different techniques. Um, have been shown to outperform it in certain areas, uh, especially if you look at things where less data is, uh, is available or where the data becomes very homogenous and different, um, or where there is particular susceptibility to overfitting. So in all these cases, you know, deep learning maybe makes a good subroutine or uh, maybe it's just not the best thing to be used. Now, with regard to cybersecurity, um, there's a lot of mixed views on where deep learning fits into things. Um, you know, probably one obvious area that I think deep learning is going to start making a big impact is in looking at reducing false positives in your SOC environment. And you know, a great example of this is a startup called PatternX. It's been doing a really good job of this. Um, however, uh, we have also seen in research in uh, cybersecurity where deep learning models uh, fails and often even overfits. And we have found this to be in the case where you have uh, you have a uh, underlying assumption of independence among your data points, where things that happen in the future might not necessarily be dependent on what occurred in the past, and maybe what causes an event to occur comes from a different source, such as hacker discussions in a, a dark web forum might lead things to occur rather than the pattern of events um, you know, uh, being used as the, as the thing that is more causal to the outcome. So it's very new in cybersecurity to see deep learning be applied. I think personally it has a lot of promise and I think you're going to see it um, embedded in uh, different types of systems and also as a subroutine going forward. Um, I would not say though that deep learning by itself should be something you look for in a given product. Um, I think because it can be so easily used as a subroutine, pretty much any solution that is offering uh, AI or machine learning based analytics for cybersecurity likely has something, even if you know, it's, it's some more mundane uh, use such as textual analytics um, probably is leveraging deep learning. Um, and so 
it'll be very easy for a salesperson to make that claim where it may or may not be impactful. And also, I wouldn't even judge an overall system on simply if it uses uh, deep learning. I would rather judge it based on the merits of its performance, because ultimately that's what matters uh, to someone as a cybersecurity professional. So anyway, that's about it for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in and please check back for more videos. Bye now.